Good morning, KCC. Hey, it's good to be here together this morning. Would you stand as we get ready to sing our praises to the Lord this morning? Let's just open up in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for this place and these people. Um, God, that we can just come and encourage one another and uh, lift, your, lift your name high and sing your praises. God, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for who you are, that you never change, that you are good. We thank you for Jesus, and because of him, uh, the access that we have to you and the freedom that we can walk in, even this morning today. Uh, God, just meet us in this place. We're here for you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said... to hide this weary soul this bag of bones I try with all my might but I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting a vagabond just when I ran out and just when I Corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has gone the new has come and so if you are in Christ we can celebrate this morning not only are we not bound to hell but we have freedom right now today because of Jesus are you ready to sing about that are you excited yeah all right let's sing this out hell lost hell lost another one Come on.
Yeah, give him some praise this morning. What a good thing to sing about, right? Of course, when we're singing about God, I guess it's all good. <laughs>
a sacrifice with these hands lifted high hear my song hear my cry I will bring a sacrifice I will bring a sacrifice the kids head out to kids ministry if you're preschool through fifth you can head on out and as they're leaving would you just say a prayer uh, just agree with me in prayer for them lord we thank you for these children that are here lord we just ask that you would be with them and meet them in this time help them to learn something new about you today to take a step closer to you today we ask that you would be with their leaders and give them wisdom and guidance and all the energy that they need for these kiddos uh, we thank you for them jesus in your name we pray amen and now you can turn and say hi to someone next to you. <laughs> Good. 
Good morning, KCC. How you doing? It was time to hang up the Hawaiian shirts. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but we have a new teaching pastor this morning, so thought I'd dress up a little more classy. So looking forward to that. Hey, if you're new here this morning, it's especially nice having you with us. And yeah, you're with us on a very interesting day as uh, we have a new pastor. After almost a quarter of a century, uh, Dave Johnson retired last week. And uh, it's weird sitting out amongst the people, isn't it, Dave? So enjoy, enjoy. He probably woke up this morning with no pressure. So I think I'll have another cup of coffee, right? Good for you. Uh, but it's uh, good having you here. Uh, if you are visiting with us, we're uh, getting ready to enter into a new season of church life here. And you can say, hey, I was there at the very beginning of uh, that pastor's coming, Philip and his wife, Sarah Davis. Uh, before uh, we go on, though, uh, we would like you, if you're visiting with us, or really it's, it's anyone, if you got one of those, uh, they're not really a church bulletin, it's a flyer. We'll call it a church flyer. If you got that church flyer when you came in, there's a QR code right at the top. And if you uh, click on that QR code, it's up here on the screen, uh, it will take you to a place where you can register uh, your attendance. And why would you want to do that? Uh, a couple of reasons. Number one is our pastor will follow up with you this week. Uh, and um, there might be something in it for you. I won't tell you what it is, but uh, if you'll click on that, that would be great. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that our discipleship classes started last Wednesday night. What is a discipleship class? A discipleship class is a class intended to help you grow spiritually. And we have four primary classes. One meets on Friday morning, and Jim Van Lint uh, leads that class. Jim, would you do us the honor of standing, especially for our visitors so they can put a name with a face. Jim leads that Friday morning class, and he will be out at the, in the table in the lobby after this service for anybody that has any questions about that men's Bible study. Kathy Froman, Kathy, would you stand? She leads a ladies' class that meets on Wednesday nights here at the church. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about that class, Kathy will be at a table out in the lobby right after this service. We have a men's uh, group that meets, I think it's every other Wednesday night, and they meet at Louis Pub, and John Wildryer leads that. John, would you stand up? Thank you for doing that. And John, immediately following this service, will be at a table in the lobby, and if you have any questions, you can see him. And then I lead a class. Uh, it's called Bible 101. I was going to call it Bible for Dummies, but that sounds offensive. But if you just don't have a good working knowledge of the Bible, like the major stories of the Bible and when they occurred, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be taking a class through that. Uh, it's every Wednesday night at 6.30, and I will be at a table immediately following this service out in the lobby. And if you have any questions about any of those classes, uh, we would like to answer them for you. Okay, I'm going to ask if Dave and Lori and Teresa would join me on stage, and we're going to call up Philip and Sarah. Why don't y'all stand right in the middle, Philip, Sarah, and uh, we want to pray for this couple, and we want to welcome them, give them a hearty welcome to uh, KCC, and I know that many of y'all have done that. Uh, you've uh, introduced yourselves. Thank you. But this morning is their formal, I want to call it installation. I don't, you don't want to call it that Cor coronation. I don't know. What, so, uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, Lori and I just wanted to, we, first of all, we want to thank you again for last week, and it was very meaningful, and the cards and videos were awesome, and so thank you for that. But we wanted to share a little bit with uh, Philip and Sarah as we head out of this ministry, and they head into it. So Lori's going to say something first. Sarah, I want to officially welcome you to the KCC family. You will learn to love this family as much as I do. You will feel their love, comfort, and support as you get to know them. Ministry is not new to you and Philip. 
Good times as well as challenging times are ahead. But through prayer, together God will provide for your family. Balancing family and ministry is at times very challenging. But again, God will provide for you. And as many of you saw, these rows were filled with our family, all of our children, our grandchildren, and they're all walking with the Lord. And it is possible. It can happen. <clears throat> Dave and I are here to help pray, provide friendship and encouragement to you in this journey. We already love you and look forward to spending time with and getting to know your sweet family. I'm going to... If you guys could join me in prayer for Sarah. Lord, we just thank you so much for bringing Philip and Sarah here, and we just ask, Lord, that you will particularly be with Sarah. Um, everybody knows Philip, and um, Sarah's kind of in the background at the moment, but we just pray, Lord, that you take, that these people take time to get to know Sarah. We ask you, Lord, to be with them as they make their transition from California to here, and we just pray, Lord, that you will help Sarah to feel especially welcomed in this family and loved, and we just pray, Lord, that you will help her find her place here. And we just look forward to seeing what she has to offer our church and what we have to offer her. It's in your name I pray. Amen. And Philip, um, as I think back to when I started, I was about your age at this church, and um, and that just seems weird to you know, almost 25 years later, it's like, wow. And now you're, now you're starting, and I know we've talked about how much of a blessing it would be if, if God blesses you with that uh, length of time, and then you hand it off to somebody else and that kind of stuff. But it's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful church. They're hungry for the word. They're hungry for challenging teaching. And I just want to give you the same words and the same charge that Paul gave to Timothy um, in Second Timothy 3, it is, if I can find it now. Yes, I had it written. I had it labeled. I should know it. Uh, uh -huh. Yep, there it is. I solemnly charge you. There it is. Second Timothy 4, if you want to know. Second Timothy 4, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set up his kingdom. Preach the word. Be prepared whether it's time, the time is favorable or not. Correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. That's what they're hungry for. That's what the church needs. That's what we've been trying to do. And now, man, I'm just excited that you're going to do it too. Now, I'm going to tell you that I tried to get something like a baton to hand on, and all I could find was batons that you twirl. And so I figured that wouldn't be good. So this is as close as we get. Thank you. This is as close as we get. It is a musical stick, but it'll handle. <laughs> it's a baton. Now the baton is yours, my man. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to ask the elders, would you, would you uh, come up front, elders? We're going to have a little time of prayer as we commission you to ministry. Hey, hey you know, um, when I first came here at KCC, one of the things that I love about this church, I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. Of course. I'm only five foot eight, and I've never been the tallest person on staff before. <laughs> I came here, and Jeff Selvey, and anyway. So when people ask me, you know, what is the primary thing you're looking for in a pastor, I often said about five, six or so. So anyway, uh, he does. <laughs> Philip, uh, we're going to give you our love and our support and our loyalty and our commitment to you and Sarah. Uh, but none of that is where you'll find your power. Your power will come from the Holy Spirit. And so we are going to pray God's supernatural, abundant power be lavished upon you and Sarah as you begin this ministry. People of KCC, would you stand up and join us as we pray? Father, this morning we come to you and we want to first of all thank you for the quarter of a century of ministry that uh, you have provided this church and community through the Johnson family. And Father, as we this morning transition to another family, we ask that the same Holy Spirit that was upon the Johnsons, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would lay upon the shoulders of Philip and Sarah and that you would use them mightily as leaders of your church in Kalamazoo and might uh, your blessings flow from them to these people and to this community. 
Father, might we be faithful as a church to pray for them regularly, to support them, to try to understand, Father, the, the place that you have called them to. And it is with excitement that we look forward to not just what Philip and Sarah will do. Father, we look with excitement and anticipation to what your Holy Spirit will do through these, your choice servants. So we commission our brother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Might your power be his. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Welcome to the pulpit, friend. You've been installed. You've been installed. <laughs> So thank you. Bought a house that was a little bit like halfway flipped. So watching a lot of HGTV, learning how to do some things, things I've never done before. Um, if doors don't close all the way, I'll fix it some other time. But just learning a lot of things. Uh, like, like they said, we're coming from Southern California. We didn't grow up there. We've only been there two years. And um, looking forward, while we'll miss, I just got to say, we'll miss 89 degrees on Christmas. I hear that doesn't happen here. Um, so we'll miss that. We'll really miss the Pacific. There's nothing like the Pacific Ocean. We love California. Um, but we're looking forward to being with you. And I actually used to be a youth pastor in Rochester Hills, Michigan, the metro Detroit area. And I always said, if I, especially the last couple of years, we were in California, about a year in, we're like, we just really feel like, like it's a challenging ministry for me to be in, for us to be a part of, like maybe we should start to think about going either a different place or back home. And Sarah and I used to go to Rochester, the lights. Have you, I don't know if you guys have ever been over there, but they decorate Main Street in Rochester with a bunch, with a bunch of lights. And we both said, you know, if we're gonna leave California, don't want to live in Ohio, that's where I'm from. We don't want to live in Indiana, that's where she's from. Michigan sounds good, because Michigan's awesome. Um, and Southwest Michigan is absolutely beautiful. So thank you guys for welcoming us here. Um, now, I just got to say something uh, about the Johnson family. And it is a, it's intimidating and a huge honor to be able to have a literal baton handed to me. Um, I'll learn how to play that for you later. But um, it's been, it's a huge honor to be a part of this and to be a part of his transition. And seeing, if you were here last week, it, just seeing the love that you have for somebody who dedicated almost 24 years to this place was just incredible. It's a legacy that I'm hoping to continue on. In fact, that leads me to this. This is our very first sermon series together. Like, that's, in, that's important. We just saw Dave preach his very last of many. Um, he'll be back up here, by the way, just so you know. Um, but I'm starting my, my first of what I hope to be just as many. And that's exciting. It, it really is. And I thought, what better title for our first sermon series, whether you're here or, or tuning in online right now, than the question we're all asking. What next? It's pretty appropriate. We just had this huge transition happen as a church. What is next? Now, sometimes when you ask what next, what you really mean is, Pastor, what are you going to change? All right? We understand. But for real, what's next for KCC? Because what we just experienced was something known as a leader shift. And a leader shift is not exclusive to Kalamazoo Community Church. It's not even exclusive to churches. It's really important. But a leadership happens all over. Leaderships happen in organizations that are growing when they transition a new or maybe a younger person with fresh eyes, fresh vision into a position to keep the organization growing. You know leaderships happen at restaurants too, don't you? When they go from a one star to showing up on Triple D the next, it's because typically a leadership has happened. Leaderships happen for the next generation and what they do is they help them find their place in the story and they help them achieve incredible things now here's why i think today matters i think every day matters that we come together as believers but here's why i think today really really matters because i think no matter whether you are a christian or not i think we can all learn from what we're going to talk about today because you're welcome here no matter no matter if you're a follower of jesus or not and i think that today will actually be very beneficial for you no matter where you find yourself and here's why all of us are preparing somebody else 
to take the seat we currently occupy. Every single one of us. And what we just saw is a leader do that extremely well. You know, I've heard of some of the most incredible stories of these like vice presidents, CEOs of these companies. And while they're at their height, their peak, they transition rather than being asked to leave when they should have left 10 years ago. And thankfully, we have, we have the first example here of someone stepping away at their peak with a lot of other energy. And all of us, whether we know it or not, or whether we agree or not, all of us are transitioning other people into leadership. Here's what I mean. If you're a parent, this is so, so important. If you are a parent, your kids will one day turn 18, and they'll graduate, hopefully. And then they'll move out of the house, even more hopefully. And you will transition them into another leader. And do you know who that leader is? Themselves. And whether or not we've done a good job, we'll be able to see. If we've done a good job, what typically happens is we become more of a peer, more of a consultant on life's issues, because their authority is now themselves. It's so, so important. If you're a volunteer at church, and there's a lot of you here, this church runs, every church runs on volunteers, your role is so important because you have an opportunity to see someone of the next generation, of a younger generation than you, and mentor them into doing what you're able to do in hopes that maybe they'll take your place or go find something else to do. If you're a student, you and the grades lower than you as if you're a senior in college a senior in high school think of those grades lower than you you actually have a responsibility to mentor those younger kids and help them get to where you are maybe even surpass you all of us are shaping somebody of the next generation and i want us to be a church that focuses on shaping them well now, if you're not really a churchy person, I get you. Trust me, I get you. But I think today's really important because you may have been turned off the church because of a negative experience or maybe you just don't really get it or you're not quite sure what you think. But this is a great day to come because I hope it gives you a picture of who we are. I already feel like I know the culture of KCC and it's one that has a high value for younger people, a high value for our kids. And to those of you who call this church your church home, this is an important day, isn't it? But I don't have to tell you that. You know this. Where are we going to go? What is next? My heart beats for the next generation. I don't think they're the church of tomorrow. I think they're the church of right now. And we have a responsibility to them. You know, leaderships, they happen all over the Bible, actually. Old Testament, New Testament. Some were done really well, some not so well. And the one I want to study today, we see them happen a lot in the Bible, but the one I want to study today is so, so important. You guys actually spent an entire month going through the book of Elijah. Some of you remember that. Pastor Kenny brought us through Elijah. And in that story, we find him having his own leadership. He's all over First and Second Kings, but in Second Kings, we actually find his official leadership happening. Here's what happened. He was old. Now, I'm not, talk, I'm not saying anything about Dave, okay? Let's just make that clear, all right? But Elijah was like old, old, okay? And he'd been doing this for a long time. And if we're honest, Elijah was maybe in a space where he should be thinking about stepping down. He had just defeated Jezebel and the false god, and he's running for his life, and he's just tired. He's just like ready to go home, and God's like, hey, not so fast. Before you go, you need to find somebody, and you need to have them take your place. So he finds this young willing, which is a key component here, guy named Elisha. And the relationship starts, and it develops, and he shows him how to do all this prophet stuff. And then the official leader transition happens. The leadership happens. Here's how it goes. I am very glad this is not how it happened at KCC. I'll take a baton over this any day. Here's how it goes down, okay? As they were just walking along, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up into heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Now, I'm really glad a fire tornado didn't take Dave from us. <laughs> and if it did, I wouldn't be right here. I would be running and hiding. But we did see a leader shift. Now, the story I want to focus on today, though, is actually from the New Testament. That was a great Old Testament example. But the one I want to focus on today has, is actually a relationship that's always encouraged me. I don't know if you're like this, but for some reason, I've always found myself in a room 
as a young leader with a bunch of older leaders. And it's intimidating. And this relationship between a guy named Paul and his young apprentice, we'll call him Timothy, has always encouraged me. Here's how the relationship starts. Paul came to Derby and then the Lystra where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along for the journey, so he circumcised him because the Jews lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. And this is the verse I want to highlight. So the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. What we see is a relationship where Paul literally took a young man and mentored him and showed him how to do it. We can tell our kids all kinds of stuff, can't we? But when we show them, it goes a little deeper. And this is what Paul did. Paul taught Timothy how to start churches, how to grow churches, how to handle conflict, which would come in handy later. And their relationship grows and grows, and it becomes this amazing partnership. And then they separate willingly. Paul tells him, they're in this church in Ephesus, and he tells him, I need you to stay here, and I need you to be the pastor here, this young guy. And from the scholars think this church was like, think of your mega church. It was huge. And he leaves them there because it was a troubled church. There were some older people in Ephesus causing trouble for the new young guy. I'm watching you guys. <laughs> I will tell Dave. <laughs> but these older, I know there's none of you like that here, right? But uh, these older people were causing folks to go astray. And Paul literally sends young Timothy there and says, fix the problem. How many of us have a younger person that we would trust to go put out a fire that we started? That is leadership. That is incredible. Well, Paul, it's actually what we think. It's actually several years that Timothy's there dealing with all of this. They didn't have text messaging back then, which is a huge bummer, because I'm sure he would have liked some encouragement. About four years in, Paul writes him a letter, and here's how he starts it out. 1 Timothy 1, verse 18, he says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command, so he's commanded him to stay faithful. He said, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well, holding on to the faith in a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Now, I know, you guys, this isn't a very spiritual, like, self-help type of message to be preaching my very first Sunday as your teaching pastor. And I'm okay with that because what I want to do is I want to set a tone for what I believe our church already stands for and where I want to see us go in the future. What we've just witnessed was a very healthy leader shift. And I would love to carry that culture on as your new teaching pastor in every area of ministry, in our community, all of that, to be thinking of the next generation and how we can encourage them and raise them up. Because the truth is, what kind of church do people really want to come to? One that adds value. Value onto them, value onto the community, value onto their children and their children's children. They'll even suffer through a lot of really mediocre preaching if there's something for their kids to grow. And to do this well, I believe we have to be a church that focuses on a leadership mentality. And you're probably asking, at least I hope you are, well, how do we do that? I think there's one question that we all need to ask. When we ask, okay, how do I do that? Like whatever part I play in the story, whether I'm a church person or not, you're involved in, a, in someone from the next generation's life. How do you raise them up? I think it's just a question we have to ask every day. And here it is. No matter what you do, you ask this question. Who are you bringing with you? Who am I bringing with me? With your kids when you're doing stuff, and trust me, it's really hard to remodel a bathroom with a three-year-old running around trying to grab your nail gun. Right? I've nailed my fingers together before. I didn't want her to do it to me as well, okay? But who are we bringing with us to show them how to do these things? Look, I'm only here as a pastor because somebody, actually a group of people, they saw something in this young guy that was really immature and didn't have a clue. They saw something. I still sometimes don't know what it is, 
But they saw something, and they mentored me. They said, Philip, I see this in you, and it made all the difference in the world. This applies to your job. I don't know, like, I know we've got, like, blue-collar and white-collar workers in here, but no matter where you're at in that, who is a younger person that you could be teaching to do what you do and do it even better? Who is that? How much more rewarding would it be to do, to find someone younger and raise them up to surpass you? This so applies to our parenting. It really does, because we have a duty to raise a leader. We, we are raising them to lead. However good or bad we do is, is, is up to us. That's the good thing. But there's no benefit to being a lawnmower parent and running over every obstacle that they'll ever face. And I'm telling you that because I'm that guy. If I see our kids about to do something that's going to cause some sort of crying or anything, I'm like, no, 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 instead of just letting them fail or letting them succeed and coming alongside them in the process. Here's the thing. All of us can add value to somebody else. And I know you're going to look back on today and say your first like big one-liner was so cheesy, but I don't care. I just wanted it to rhyme, okay? <laughs> Here's what I think we should do. No matter how old you are, help someone younger set the bar. Don't judge my cheesiness. <laughs> it's catchy, though. You'll remember that. No matter how old you are, help somebody younger set the bar. Bring them along to where you're at. What's this mean for you? Well, if you're a parent, we already covered that, but maybe you're a coach. Not to go all Ted Lasso on you, but the guy's really up to something, okay? Instead of teaching them just to play the game, teach them to become people of character and integrity. If you're a married person, did you know, I, I, of course you know this, everybody knows this, that the divorce rate's pretty high in our nation. I don't have to tell you that. It used to be 50%. And I did a lot of research because I didn't believe this stat when I first heard it. But did you know that that rate is actually decreasing ever so slightly? And I think I know why. I think there's two reasons. I think the first one is people are just waiting longer to get married so they got a little bit more sense about them. But the second, younger people, there is an increasing number of younger couples that are seeking out older and wiser couples that have a healthy, functioning marriage, many of whom I'm sure are in this room. And they're asking them, hey, help us, walk with us. And there's an increasing number of older married couples that have that, that are saying, yes, I will, and are ready for that. And many of you are sitting in this room. I think that's what's happening. There's so many implications of this kind of relationship, this who am I bringing with me attitude. And I think that our leader that just shifted from leadership had that. So why am I teaching on this first? Well, that's a good question. Someone mentored me and it changed my life. And I've watched it change others' lives as well. Your life has likely been shaped by somebody saying, hey, I see this in you. Your career, if you look back, why do you do what you do? It could be, it likely is, because somebody affirmed something in you. And I want KCC to be a church that equips the next generation for life, for faith, for family, for their school, for their jobs, and more. This is the culture I want to create here. In fact, this is the culture I want to continue here because I believe it's already at play. People keep asking me, uh, Philip, where are you taking us? That's a, that's a scary question for you to ask and for me to answer. And people keep asking, where are you going to take us? What's next? Where are we going? And I think it would be a huge disservice to actually stand up here and go, well, here it is. Because I'm still asking God, where do you want us to go? And I hope you are too. But what I can give you are th what I'm calling in all these meetings that people ask me is I'm calling these KCC's big three because I think they're universal to church growth, to church success, and to church health. And there are three really easy, important things. Number one, help people find and follow Jesus. If we can do that well, we're on to something. Because that covers, and I know not everyone in here is a churchy person, so this covers two churchy words, okay? And we'll break them down. To help people find is called evangelism. To help people follow is called discipleship. And if we can do those two things really, really well, we'll impact our community. The second big three and this one is so important, is to help 
Make this place a place that the next generation loves to attend and be a part of in everything we do to think about that. And the third, equally as important, help make Kalamazoo better. We have an obligation to do that. Help make this county better. Maybe it'll help make the state better. Maybe it'll help make our nation better if we do our role. Those are the big three. If we can, I believe you guys, if we can focus on these three things really, really well as a church family, we will see things that you and I, we can't even fathom. So if you're new here, what an incredible time to join. I'm new here as well, so we'll learn together. And I'm glad you're here, and I hope you find something to maybe settle into and to dig in and to get excited about. And if you've been at KCC for a long time, this is your church home, what an exciting time to be here. I agree with Dave. I think the best days are ahead of us, not because of a new leader, but because of a healthy leadership and a healthy leadership culture. And you all are a part of that. However big or small of a role that you think you play. So what is next? What's next are exciting times. I'm optimistic, I'm eager. What's next for you, I think, is leaving here today and going, God, who can I bring with me? Maybe it's my kids. Even though it drives me nuts sometimes, Lord, to have them help me with stuff or to have those conversations and I think they're not listening, help me have the courage to do that. Maybe it's someone at work. Maybe it's someone that you pass here every week or on the way to work. I don't know. Who are you bringing with you? It's a question I promise you as a leader here, I will be asking as well. Who am I bringing with? You know, I thought it'd be kind of cool. When you came in today, uh, you got this little cup, okay? And if you did not get one, raise your hand, and we have some hosts that will bring it to you if, if you missed it, okay? Um, but you got this little cup. We, so we call this communion, and it's, it's really neat, actually, because there are churches all over the world that do this. It's an ancient practice. It's one of the, well, when you talk about old school, this is the most old school thing we do but it's one of the most important. And some churches do it every week. Some churches do it monthly, quarterly. We just do it, but not just to do it. When Jesus was about to be betrayed and handed over, beaten, crucified, he had this meal with his, his closest followers, these men and women that just did life with them for those years. And as they're up in this, it was like the second story of a home. They called it an upper room. And he was sitting there with these disciples. And he, bread and wine was just super common at every table. And he took those things, just common things they could find every day so they wouldn't have to go search for it. And he breaks some bread and he passes it around and he drank some wine and he passes it around. This must've been pre COVID because they weren't worried about that. But he passes it around as everyone is doing this together. He said, hey, this is my body broken for you. And this is my blood that's shed for you, symbols. They had no clue what was about to happen. He told them, but they didn't want to believe it. And then they watched over the next couple of days, their savior who they followed be beaten, humiliated, and killed. And three days later, he came back. That's why we do this. Because we remember he is not dead. And this is a promise, not just for you and I, but for every person that says, I will follow Jesus. Now, I know this contraption can be kind of confusing, but I thought it'd be kind of cool for us to do this together for the first time. So if you take that, there's a little film on the top. Just peel that off. And you'll get a nice stale cracker. This is his body broken for us, okay? So we take it together. Man, I really hate to disappoint you, but this is not real wine. It's just juice. But you peel it off. And you try not to get it on yourself. But it's a symbol, you guys. His blood shed for us. And, and not just shed for us. The people next to you. The people who disagree with you. 
the people who don't even like you, he shed this blood for them as well. So we drink this and remember that. And we do it every single time we do this. We remember this every single time. You guys, thank you for being here and thank you for letting my wife and and our our family be a part of your church. So it means a lot to us. We've been through a lot over the past few months. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We'll talk about that in the coming weeks, but um, thank you for welcoming us. It's an honor to be here. Dave, thank you, dude. Lori, thank you guys. And uh, yeah, let's see what's next, shall we? Let's, let's sing.
sing that chorus together one more time this morning. actually going to be um, a couple up here by our wooden cross and some of us come in with just a lot of heaviness um, things that we want to have prayed over um, we just want prayer we just want to know like God cares about us he does and we'll have people over here at the end of every service that are more than willing to pray for you and with you but what I'd like to do as we head out today is I would like to pray for us is that okay because we're a family and I'd really love to just ask God to just tell us where to go. So let's do that together. Father, we're just here to be faithful. Whatever that looks like, Lord, we know you'll show us. We trust you. You are good. In your son's name we pray. Amen.